From the orca trainer who was dragged underwater, and a trainer who barely escaped death, to the first orca attack caught on camera, and the four unlucky people who orcas killed, here are ten attacks by captive orcas. It is 1971, and at SeaWorld in San Diego, Shamu is literally one of the biggest attractions in the world. And over the years, millions have poured in to see the giant killer whale perform all types of tricks. Visitors' most favorite thing is to watch humans jump on board and ride this gentle giant. So, trainers practice with orcas for the show. In this practice session, Annette Eckes climbs on the back of Shamu. After a couple of laps around the pool, Anne blows the whistle, and Shamu pulls up to the side to let her up. A few minutes later, Anne climbs back on board again. But halfway around, Anne slips, which frightens Shamu. It put Anne at great risk. Two divers jump in immediately to free Anne, but they can't do anything. As the killer whale tosses Anne around like a toy, handlers try to guide him to the side so that they can help Anne. At last, Shamu surfaces and goes to the side of the pool, but Anne's leg is locked in her powerful jaws. The situation is so unstable, and Shamu may dive in and take Anne with it at any time. Finally, a handler pushes a pole down on the whale's tongue, and she lets go. Anne survived, but ended up with 200 stitches. I was so afraid I was going to drown. And because she would dive and go down, and I didn't know how long she would, you know, be down there. There was a lot of blood, but there was no... And the water was cold, and, and I, was, I was in shock for quite a while. In March 1987 at SeaWorld San Diego, trainer Jonathan Smith had a scary encounter. Kandu, this female orca, weighing over five tons, suddenly grabbed Jonathan and pulled him deep into the water. Then, surprisingly, the orca brought him back up and let him go. But suddenly, a second orca named Canal slammed into him. Both whales repeatedly smashed into him, dragging him to the bottom of the 32-foot deep pool. This encounter took two and a half minutes and Jonathan managed to escape the pool. But he suffered a long list of injuries, including a ruptured kidney and a six-inch gash on his liver. In just a few months, another incident happened at the Sea World of San Diego. A Sea World trainer named John Sillick 
was riding a female orca when a huge male orca named Orky II jumped and landed on him. It was not an attack, but John was badly hurt. He couldn't move and sank in the bottom of the tank. He suffered a broken back and massive internal injuries. He went through lots of surgeries to recover. Amazingly, John survived, but our next story does have a very sad ending. In 1991, a sad event happened at Sealand of the Pacific in Canada. On February 20th, Kelty Byrne, a young trainer, accidentally fell into an orca tank. There is no video recording of the sad incident, but eyewitnesses tell the story. Uh, I saw her walking with her rubber boots and she tripped and her foot just dipped into the edge of the pool and she lost her balance and fell in. And then she was pushing her way up to get out of the pool and the whale zoomed over, grabbed her boot and pulled her back in. First, Nutka, a female orca, rushed over and grabbed her foot and pulled her into the water. Then, two other orcas, Haida and Tilikum, took turns grabbing the trainer and keeping her underwater. And my sister remembers her saying, I don't want to die. Tragically, she became the first known person who died of orca attacks. This tragic incident led to the closure of Sealand and the transfer of Tilikum to SeaWorld. Following the killing of Kelty Byrne and closure of Sealand of the Pacific, Tilikum was sold to SeaWorld. SeaWorld did not consider the severity of the incident and began using Tilikum for performance. The SeaWorld also used him for breeding. He sired 21 calves and fathered half of the SeaWorld orcas. For nearly eight years, everything went well until 1999, when Tilikum killed Daniel Dukes at SeaWorld Orlando. Orange County's sheriff deputies have identified the 27-year-old man found dead in a killer whale's tank at SeaWorld. The victim is Daniel P. Dukes from South Carolina. An autopsy showed that Daniel had drowned. He was covered in bruises, abrasions, and bite marks. The most horrific detail was that his genitalia were mutilated, and Tilikum may have chewed or even eaten them. The circumstances of how Daniel ended up in the tank remain unclear. Cameras all over SeaWorld. There are cameras all over the back of Shamu Stadium, pointing every which way. There are underwater cameras. Um, I find it hard to believe that uh, nobody knew until the morning that there was a body in there. There was no record of him purchasing a ticket. Also, tests showed that he had no drugs in his system. This mysterious incident received minimal attention, partly because the park depicted him as a homeless trespasser, which led to less media interest in the story. Well, all I know is the public relations version of it. He was a young man that had been arrested not long before he snuck into SeaWorld. Maybe he climbed the barbed wire fence around the perimeter and stayed after hours. In late July 2004, during a show at the SeaWorld Park in San Antonio, Texas, an experienced trainer named Steve Eibel started the show with a male orca named Kai. From Kai's behavior, trainers suspected that he was not in his regular mood. The show quickly turned into a tragic event. Kai repeatedly jumped on top of his trainer. Every time Steve tried to exit the pool, Kai barred him from exiting and pushed him underwater. After several stressful minutes, Steve was able to calm Kai, but Kai didn't want to let him exit. It took a while before other trainers distracted Kai. 
and Steve successfully escaped. Veterinarians believe Kai felt threatened by the trainer, probably because of the effects of adolescent hormones. 17 years of training with animals and I've never had an experience like that. On November 15, 2006, Orchid caused another incident. It was during a show this time and everything was going as planned. Suddenly, the 18-year-old female Orca grabbed Brian Rokich, her trainer, by the foot and dragged him underwater. Brian was underwater and Orchid didn't let go. Other trainers tried hard to call her attention back to the stage. Finally, they were successful, and Orchid came up for a treat and released Brian. Brian pretended that he was okay in front of the audience, but he was later taken to the hospital for a torn ligament. On November 29, 2006, another incident happened at SeaWorld San Diego. This chilling video was released by SeaWorld for legal investigations. It shows Kenneth Peters, an experienced trainer, swimming with Kasatka, a 5,000-pound female orca. In just a few seconds, and with no apparent warning, Kasatka grabs Ken's foot and drags him underwater. The video shows Ken's struggle to free himself from the orca, but he is like a toy in that powerful jaw. One stressful minute passes and the orca brings Ken back to the surface. I think that Kasatka was trying to make a point. Once they finally come to the surface that first time, she is making a point by keeping him captive like that. Suddenly the orca yanks him down again, keeping him underwater for a second time. After the whale surfaces again, Ken tries to calm her down. But again, the orca continues dragging Ken like a toy. Luckily, the trainer is experienced and knows how to stay calm and regain control. Once the orca is calm, she releases Ken. Ken manages to swim away. As soon as he is out, his fellow trainers rush to his help. He was very lucky that his injuries were minor and he could return to work in a few weeks. This dramatic event took nine minutes. I think he had no choice but to simply remain calm, do what he can to get her to relax. But at the same time, if she had wanted to do more damage, she very easily could have, and I think it was her decision. We may think that these incidents are rare, but it seems that they happen for orca trainers very frequently. For me, 10 times. I've had 10 major water work aggressions where whales have grabbed me and pulled me under during my career. These trainers were lucky, but our next two incidents do not have a happy ending. On December 24, 2009, 29-year-old Alexis Martinez died during a rehearsal for a Christmas Day show at Loro Parque in Spain. Let's go back and see what happened. The SeaWorld gave four orcas to Loro Parque in Spain. Orcas were new additions to the park, so trainers were not as experienced and things were not ready yet. Alexis was one of the best trainers who could work with orcas. But orcas were not happy and healthy because of the park's conditions. Orcas were trained by SeaWorld trainers, but few of the Loro Parque trainers were sent to the U.S. for proper training. The work for trainers was hard and stressful, and Alexis was concerned about his life. He told his fiancée, no no 
Y eso me lo dijo la noche anterior al ataque. Everyone knew a tragedy was about to happen, but no one did anything about it. On the day of the attack, the orca kept him underwater for two and a half minutes. The autopsy report reveals he died due to multiple compression fractures and tears to his vital organs, with bite marks all over his body. On February 24, 2010, Tilikum, the largest captive orca, killed his third victim. His victim was Don Broncho. Dawn was one of the most experienced trainers in SeaWorld, and she loved Tilikum. We interact with them day in, day out. We're working together and having a lot of fun as well. The incident happened during the Dine with Shamu show. In this setting, guests oh, ate at an oh open-air restaurant <laughs> while watching the performance poolside as the orca performed and was fed. The show went well, and Tilikum had an impeccable performance. As part of the end of show routine, she was at the edge of the pool rubbing Tilikum's head. A family recorded this video right before the incident. As soon as this recording stops, Tilikum grabbed Brancho and pulled her into the water. It's like within a matter of seconds, all of a sudden he turned, he grabbed her by the head, and in a very hot thrust she went down, and I screamed and she screamed. Uh, I showed up at the pools where Tilikum had taken Dawn into, and it was very chaotic. Um, a lot of people responded, uh, probably about 85 people responded. SeaWorld says that Tilikum grabbed her ponytail but eyewitness trainers and audience members say that Tilikum dragged Brancho into the water by her forearm. He pulled Dawn from pool to pool in the complex. Trainers eventually directed Tilikum to a smaller pool to make it easier to calm him down. After approximately 45 minutes, Tilikum released her body. The autopsy report says that Dawn died of multiple traumatic injuries and drowning. No public video of the event is available because of a court order. Judge issued a temporary restraining order on the videos, preventing their release. Now, Brancho's family and SeaWorld want the order to become permanent.